Hey everybody, Debbie here with another Stratega game analysis. This is going to be game two of our three major attack series, uh, playing from behind. And in this game, we're playing a bronze uh, general. I think he, he had like 1,800 games experience, but he was a couple hundred games under 500. So what I why I want to show this game is because uh, it, I want you to see if you can figure out how to use the information to plan an attack at the start of the game. That's the most important part. The beginning of this game is, is if you're going to watch, watch it. It's to see if you can figure out what to do. So let's get started to see how, how uh, this game works out. Remember, we have to attack with our three majors until we find the marshal. So let's get started with this game here. And I sped it up 150%, so it's going to go a little bit faster here. So that's always good at getting scouts off the board. So he has a lot of scouts on the front lines. So, when you use this strategy, you hope to find the marshal in the first uh, with the first major, because that's that's really worth it. A, a it's worth giving up a major to find the marshal, especially at the start of the game, because then you have the entire game to make up that deficit, and then you have this person he can't bluff anymore. Uh, you know, you you have him on the defensive, because you know when your marshal gets revealed. Uh, you have to worry about general counterattacks. You have to worry about the spy attacking you. And then, then it's a domino effect. You know, if your marshal gets found, let's say, over here, re revealed over here, uh, then, you know, and a general starts coming to attack over here, then your other, other high piece, the general, has to defend. And then, you know, that gets revealed. And if they swap, then your colonels get revealed. So it's, 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 it just uh, makes the game so much harder uh, when your marshal gets revealed. And you definitely don't want your marshal to get revealed when you get way behind. Because that really ruins your chances of uh, making a comeback. You know, when your marshal is hidden, any piece, you know, almost any piece on the top two rows uh, can be uh, assumed as the marshal. You know, and even on the second to last row, you know, a lot of times people have a marshal there. You know, every once in a while, some platinum players might have a marshal on the back row. But that's that's fairly rare. But, uh, you know, you lose your ability to bluff when your marshal gets revealed. Uh, and, and it's very, very difficult to come back. All right, so let's see where we are here. We haven't gained much so far. Sometimes it's best to let them attack you and then you. So that's good. We, we're already doing better than we did in the last game. We got a lieutenant at the start. So charge right in. So we find a colonel. So remember that, that's important. All right, we get another lieutenant. You rather get, you, you hope to get captains, but lieutenants are all right. Now, my opponent's probably saying, what the hell is he doing here with all these majors? <laughs> he's, he's probably, uh, I think that's the one thing I notice. A, a lot of players get a little shell shocked when you come in with three majors and attack. And then, and then I think they're still shocked when you keep on playing when you're down three majors. They, don't, they, they say, why is he still playing? He should surrender. 
So now we get another lieutenant, so that's pretty pretty good. Like I said, you still rather have captains. So we got three lieutenants, that's not bad. We get something. Okay, so now this is this is where you really want to take time. It I you know, sometimes you can read a board fairly quickly. And other times you just you're totally clueless. Like I think in the game, road to, road to gold game, I never figured out the guy had a marshal here, and maybe it was probably obvious to some of you. But in this game, this game it clicked to me how I should attack right away. I knew I I knew exactly what to do, and I just I just uh, that's probably from you know playing several thousand games uh, and understanding you know how boards are set up. So let's see what we know. First of all, we got th three lieutenants, which is it. That's you, you'd like to have at least one or two captains. Uh, this is pretty weak, and we didn't find a marshal, which sucks. So you always want to find a marshal. So going down three majors and not finding a marshal is 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 bad. <laughs> you really want to find a marshal, but uh, at least we we did get some good information out. We we found the colonel. Started here in this spot. The general started here, right? And then this colonel started here. So now I want you you guys to pause the video and think of a plan of attack. Think of what we know. We know the colonel was here, the general was here, and and a, another colonel was here. So how would you attack your opponent? knowing this information or or what assumptions can you make about uh, the the opponent's uh, setup uh, try to think of stratego patterns and then try to think of what piece does he have that's vulnerable look try to look from your opponent's perspective let's say you're 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 the blue player and i just came in with three majors and i revealed this colonel this general and, and this colonel. Now, what what piece would you think is vulnerable, and why? So pause the video and think about that. That's that's the whole key right now. How to how to come from behind in this game. Uh, if you can figure that out, you're you're on your way to be moving up the Stratego leaderboard. Uh, because I this one this one came uh, real clear to me. So take take a minute or two or five minutes to really think about a plan. A plan of attack, how to attack with a colonel here, a general here, and a colonel here. All right, well, what we can assume from the start is I, I always try to figure out if it's, a, if it's a balanced attack or a balanced setup or an overload, meaning if you have a marshal and colonel on one side and a general and colonel on the other side, it's a fairly balanced attack or balanced setup. Um, and then they have like a bomb over here and a bomb over here. So this is a fairly balanced setup. An overload would be like when I play with my flag up front, when I had all the high pieces on one side, or, or you might have three of them on one side. You might have a general and two colonels on one side. That would be an overload. Uh, so I think with this setup here, the person has a general here and a colonel here. So I'm assuming one of these three pieces is a spy right off the start. Because uh, usually bronze players keep, keep the spy close to their general. So, And I wouldn't think it would be this one. I, I'm more likely to think it's one than these two. Uh, most of the time people don't have the spy at the start behind the lakes. So the, if you want to know the... the Gravon stats, the most popular spots are these four in the middle. This spot, this spot, here, and here. I call it the spy smile. And then the general's common spots are here, 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 and here, right above this, the spy smile. So, and the reason people put the spy in the center is, you know, because if, if first they like to try to be behind a lake or two levels down so they don't get scouted. And then they like to be fairly centralized because if you get martial blitzed on either side, you don't have that far to go to to uh, 
play defense with your spy. So that's what I'm thinking here. And and but a lot of times when you're playing a game, the spy after the first you know twenty or so moves, the spy moves up right behind the lake. So that's why it might seem that the spies are always behind the lake, but they move up after the you know the first twenty or so moves in the game. So I'm assuming one of these two, and it could be this one now, but one of them is I think the spy when you have a general and colonel. And now I think. I think the reason I think it's a balanced setup, and I think the marshal is on this side, is because the colonel is so far over. The colonel was here. And if it's an overload, a lot of times if you have an overload of a marshal, general, and colonel, and then a colonel on the other side, it's usually not that far over. The colonel is usually, you know, behind the lakes, not so out on an island. So I'm thinking... You know, one of these pieces could be the marshal. Either this, this, maybe this. But usually when you're playing bronze and silver players, they like to keep the marshal right up, right, uh, right here, you know, below the lake. So, and it makes sense to have it on a diagonal. You have the colonel here, you have the marshal here. And he could have a spy here. I don't think he would have a spy here. That's just too risky with the uh, scout. Because people have a lot of scouts in this. In this lane here, this column. So I'm I'm assuming Marshall, and then the Colonel was there, and the General Spy. You know, one of these three, and Colonel. So now, what would what would be if if we assume the Marshall was over here? What's a good plan of attack? What do you think is the weakest the weakest uh, piece to attack? Well, I think it would be this piece here, the Colonel because the general is blocked by these uh, three pieces. And another reason is because this column here puts the uh, colonel in jeopardy of the two square rule, right? So my goal, my plan is to try to get my general in this column before this, these all these pieces open up. So that's that's the goal, and then to uh, hopefully my my opponent doesn't make a colonel escape lane. I always talk about colonel escape or escape lanes in general, but it's really colonel escape lanes because I I hate when the colonels get captured. I usually make escape lanes for my especially for my colonel. So so that's what we want to try to do here. And tr when doing this, uh, you almost don't want to find the marshal because if you find the marshal, then your opponent's going to know right away you're going to be coming up with a uh, general counterattack. So then he might start opening up a a, a, a a retreat area for his colonel. So it's almost better not to find the marshal, but just to assume it and. And you want to you wanna believe your reads as you get more experience. You just have to trust them and, and be more aggressive. And if, if you do that, you're going to become a much, much better player. All right, let's see how, how this goes here and see if we can execute it. So that's always good. Again, you still want to bleed their pieces. So that's always good when you bring uh, a low piece from behind the lake up and then get a, a scout, get him to waste a scout. He's already gone through uh, seven scouts now. So that's always great when you do that. And then a lot of times you just want to pull back. But I want to know what this piece is just in case it is the marshal. And I wanted to see what this was in case it was the marshal and it was a captain. So now I move over here and this is going to tell me, this is going to tell me a lot. I moved, I moved a piece from behind the lake, which a lot of times is a high piece. And I moved it over here and he didn't move this piece at all. So either he's betting that I'm scared that this might be a marshal or a spy 
and he feels safe or he doesn't know the two square rule. So, he, I mean, he's played 1,800 games, so hopefully he knows the two square rule, but he's only a bronze general, so maybe, maybe he doesn't. If I was in, if I was playing blue right now, I would be scared to death of losing this colonel. I really would have tripwire pieces, but see, he's already wasted seven scouts. So we want to see what this piece is, and that's a major. So that this is telling me right now that this this piece probably is the marshal, almost a hundred percent. You can just read the board. The colonel was here, a major was here. And they got to be protected from Lottowers or Blitzers. So this this is most likely a uh, Marshal. And then, so if I can get my General to this spot, and maybe, and I'd like to get the Captain out of the way. That's an extra risk because he can, he can then get to the diagonal and avoid the two square rule. But I'd like to get this Captain and the Colonel because, you know, I'm three majors down. So you want to get as much as you can. See, he could still get over, but now, now it's too late. So I'm going to get all three of these pieces. And hope the marshal isn't here. But that's you know this is this is being aggressive and and believing trusting your reads that the marshal's got to be one of these pieces over here. Now what he might do, what he might have done here, uh, he could have brought this colonel all the way to the back, and then, and then. I would have to bring my general all the way back here to capture the colonel. And then he could have brought this piece over as a bluff to get me to go here if this was a bomb. That's a good trick to do. But I think a lot of top players would not go for it and would attack this piece. And I believe this piece was his, was his uh, spy. He did have his spy, I think, here next to the colonel and near his general. So now I, I don't want to swap because I'm still down three three uh, majors. Whoop! I, I put fast forward. Whoop! Okay, here we are. So we get the colonel. Sorry about that. I get the colonel, and he's trying to swap with his general. So I see what that piece is. So now I can trap this major. So this is looking really good now. So you can see how quickly a game can turn. You know, being down three majors, and then now I got a captain, a major, and a, and a colonel, and I'm up three lieutenants from the major attack. So the games can turn so quick, and all I all I did was read the board, and it, you know, this wasn't a difficult board at all to read. I mean, this was, you know, most people have balanced setups. You had the general and the colonel, and the colonel over here, and then when we found the major, we really figured out that the marshal was here. And then it was just a matter of seeing if he knew the two square rule. Now this is gonna be, you know, you're, I'm playing a bronze uh, general player. It's gonna be a lot harder to beat gold players and platinum players uh, trying this strategy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend the three major strategy against uh, platinum players. Uh, I just, I'm just using this strategy now to show you how to play from behind. So this is how you would play from behind by taking the time to 
develop a plan, to use the information you've learned from the pieces you've lost, and to figure out a plan of attack. And that's one reason why you have to know the two square rule. When pieces come from behind the lake, you better make sure you have an escape lane so you can uh, save your colonels and majors or whatever. Uh, and the other reason is to learn the two square rule so you don't get trapped. So let's see how this game uh, finishes here. It's still it's still anybody's game. I'm still down two majors. And so now we're going to see if this was the marshal. And it was. And this was kind of a blunder here. Like I said, they're gonna they're gonna bring up crap because he, he he wants to find my high pieces. He hasn't found them yet, and he does, he's he's losing a lot of his smaller pieces. And now he's gonna come up with his miners and sergeants. And I probably should have just stayed here, and he would attack me with his miner, and then I could have pulled it back. So I could have saved this sergeant. And a lot of times people will forget sergeants and, and uh, miners and lieutenants when you come up attacking and bring them back. They'll remember the most of them will remember the marshals and generals. But uh, you bring back the lower pieces and fill in holes that are gaps in your line. And then you shift around and attack over here, attack over here. They're going to forget these pieces. And then you can attack, attack with them again and hopefully find another scout or another miner or, or a high piece. Uh, but this was bad. I should, you know, I would say every piece counts. I could have saved that piece. So, but I'm I'm learning how to play uh, the the bleeding strategy and playing with the three major attack. It's a lot of fun. It really is. It just it just a lot of times we'll see in some upcoming games. My memory can't um, my memory can't uh, memorize everything that's going on. So that was a misclick with the scout. He has one more scout left. So that's good. That's his last scout. But that tells me he probably thinks this is my marshal. Now, I forgot this was the major. I think it was a major I found with my minor. I forgot. So, but that's what you want to do when you're blue. You want to come and attack with your majors to find pieces and find information. And I'm hopeful. I'm looking for the spy. If the spy was over here, I'm hoping he thinks this is my marshal and he would attack it, or hit it with any, you know, captain or lieutenant or sergeant. Hit it with something, but he doesn't. So I think this is a garbage piece coming up. Now the marshal's coming back over here, and I, I just screw up here. I just played sloppy. And then I get stupid here. I tried bluffing him. But he's not going to go this way because he, he thinks this is a high piece. So that was kind of a dumb bluff. <laughs> it didn't work. And I don't know why I did that. It's just being sloppy. And then I should have just went up and took this piece. So now I go up and say, hey, man, I go, man, am I playing dumb? So you don't want to play stupid when you're down three majors. You have to really concentrate. Now this was, I, this was a little risky here. I didn't bother counting the steps because, you know, he has my kernel pin. And I had, if we go back, you know, I, le I, I let the general go. I knew my kernel, you know, was pinned 
and if I move down here, he could he could beat me to the spot if I come around. But I could come up with the marshal to to uh, I think block it. So I didn't bother counting out any steps or anything. I figured ah, I I thought I could get there with the marshal, and even if he got my colonel, since I'm up a colonel, I could get all these pieces. So, but really, you want to count the pieces. You want to take the time, go to your buffer, count the pieces. You know, uh, so at one, two, three, four, five, six to here, and one, two, three, four, five, six. He's past me, so my colonel could be dead if he would have went right there, and and I wasn't really paying attention. But I, I definitely was. I figured, well, I could get here with the marshal in time. So. And this was a little risky. It could have been a spy. So I don't think that was going to be a spy. Uh, like I said, with, with uh, me having three scouts left and this being a bronze general player, that would be really amazing if he would came all the way down here with this piece and attack my marshal with a spy. So that's good. We get the captain. Now we're pressuring the major, and then I screw up here. He's going to pressure my colonel. This is just playing sloppy. I should have just went back and forth between these two pieces, but then I went through three three spots, and then I came back. Now I can't go back here, so that sucks. And so now he's going to get my uh, captain. So don't do that. And now I get his major. And now I race up here to block the uh, general. We'll get this captain that moved. We'll get this piece that moved. And we can swap colonels. And things are looking okay. I've almost overcome uh, the major deficit. And then we are up a colonel. Now what was funny in this game, uh, when I played it, I forgot I captured his colonel over here. After I got my general back down here, I totally forgot that uh, I was a colonel ahead. So I'm still thinking I'm a, um, we're even colonels and I'm down a major, even with captains. But I'm up three lieutenants, down two sergeants, but up uh, two minors and three scouts. So I'm looking pretty good. I could almost swap out, but I didn't even know I had the uh, colonel advantage. So make sure... See, I think I spend my time now, when I play this as strategy, I spend my time looking at the lower. You know, most most players, when they play Stratego, when they look at the uh, graveyard, they're looking at the top pieces. They want That's how they want to know how they stand in the game. Well, I'm now looking at the captain all the way to the scout, figuring out where, where I stand. It's it's an interesting uh, take when you when you play this way, how you look, how you view the... Uh, the uh, the graveyard here. Now I'm going into the buffer. Oh, now you know what I'm trying to do. Now I'm trying to think where his where his other colonel is, and I don't know that both of them are captured. I'm thinking let's let's see if the colonel or major is here. His other colonel or major is here. So I'm coming this way, and I'm going to bring this scout up. And I just thought that was funny that I. I when I saved this game, I saved it. I forgot that I captured the major the whole game or whatever. Or I forgot it was up a major the whole game. So anyway, I go here. I go here. If I wanted to swap, I could have went here. But I really wanted to get this piece. So I didn't want to swap. I have to make an escape lane for my colonel. Always get your colonel to safety. And I was like, darn it, it's not a colonel. <laughs> not a major.
So we get the minor, we chase this piece down. Now I'm thinking this was a major maybe, and it was. I left it there because I hope he would go straight down. I hope he would be in lotto mode. And now this is very dangerous what I'm doing because you don't want him to lotto where there's not a lot of bombs. So I stopped chasing him because he just might finally decide to lotto. And I decide maybe we should swap uh, generals. And I thought this piece coming down was his other colonel. <laughs> I, I really didn't think this was going to be a colonel coming down. I'm chasing his major. I decide to come back to play defense. I decide to swap. We're coming back. I oh, know, I want to get this colonel. <laughs> That's not a colonel. <laughs> and I was stunned here. I go, oh, that's a captain. And I'm like, oh. And now I figured out that I had both colonels. So now we're going to go for the major. I was like, boy, was I stupid. <laughs> and this appears to be the spy. And it did it did come from here, so he pulled it over here during the game. And he runs into the bomb and disconnects. So this was an interesting game. Uh how you can use the information you were you uh uh use the information you acquired from losing all those majors to figure out of a plan attack to figure out a plan of attack. And to implement it and it works and you know you can see how fast the game can change right i went from i went from down you know right at the start it doesn't look too good if you just look at the graveyards uh three majors to three lieutenants but i did have a lot of scouts that always helps when you get a lot of scouts early uh but that's still not you know that's not not too good, uh, three majors and three lieutenants. But because I had all that information of colonel, placement, general, and colonel, you could you could easily read this board. Any any uh, competent gold uh, with experience level player could easily, uh, I think even sil silver players should be able to read. Say, yeah, that's a balanced setup, and the marshal's probably over here. And... and uh, but then you have to know the two square rule here where, where, uh, you know, when you're in the same column here, uh, he had to, he had to, when I was over here, he had to make sure he was on this side. So when I'm here, he's on the diagonal or else he had to make an escape lane for his colonel because it turned real quick. Once I got his colonel, I got a captain, a colonel, a minor, and then we wound up getting a major too. So, so that's the one nice thing about Stratego. If you get far behind or if someone lottes you and gets a couple, you know, a captain and a major or a colonel and a lieutenant or something, uh, the game can turn real quickly, though, once you get some information and, and, and develop a, a plan. The games can really uh, turn, turn back in your favor really quick. So just make sure you read the... Uh, the graveyard, so you know that you captured what you captured. That was kind of embarrassing. I lost the uh, lost the fact that I captured uh, the colonel. So anyway, I hope you learned something in this game, and hopefully you're you're feeling better playing from behind, and you're learning how to play from behind. And then we'll show some more of these videos uh, where I uh, play longer games. Where the game uh, is in doubt and you, you just have to bleed the opponent to 
like I said, try to get these lower pieces. And I think that's a big mistake a lot of beginners make. They only look at, when they look at the scoreboard here, the graveyard, they look at the high pieces that are captured. They really need to look at the whole entire board and make sure they don't get too far down in, in lower pieces because they can lose that way as well. All right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.